Hey everyone, Michelle Seidling here with another episode of Food Experience Unplugged. Today we'll explore how to minimize toxins in the home for better health. Here to help us do that is Joe Newsma, the CEO and Chief Toxicologist at Superior Toxicology and Wellness. This podcast is available on multiple platforms, including Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and others. Please be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to be informed as new episodes become available. Also, please rate and review our podcast if you enjoyed this episode or any of our episodes. Be sure to check out our website at foodexperienceunplugged.com for some resources as you begin your health journey. Joe Nusma, welcome to Food Experience Unplugged. Thank you very much for having me, Michelle. I'm happy to be here this morning. Oh, well, we are super happy to have you as the chief toxicologist. You know, I'm coming from uh, 30 years experience in uh, human exposure to drugs and chemicals and microbials. And the overlying trend of my entire career in toxicology has always been trying to find a better way, better way to solve old problems. You know, I, I really got my start at uh, Dow Chemical, you know, doing registration studies for pesticides and herbicides and, and the, the things that uh, are used in American agriculture all the time to increase yield and decrease loss. And, you know, they do it through a number of different ways. And chemistry is just one of them. And Dow Chemical leads the way in a lot of that. Um, then after working for Dow Chemical, I went to the University of Colorado to get my PhD. And I got my PhD in pharmaceutical sciences and toxicology. And then uh, <clears throat> at the end of my graduate work, I applied for one job. I didn't go the postdoc and academic route. I just applied for you know the first job that was available. It was an industrial toxicology position with uh, Geneva Pharmaceuticals, and I got it. So I ended up not going back to Michigan where you can't see the sun from uh, November to April. And I ended up staying in Colorado because it's a wonderful place to live. Been here for 20 years. My two kids have both been born here. And, you know, so they're Colorado natives. I'm not from anywhere. My dad was a career Navy guy. So I bounced around and lived all over the place. And, and uh, so um, got the job with Geneva Pharmaceuticals and worked for corporate America. Geneva became Sando, which was the generics division of Novartis Pharmaceuticals. And so that's one of the big ones. And um, after about six years, I retired from corporate America because I realized that my mouth isn't synonymous with the corporate America values and guidelines. You know, they ask your opinion and I'm, I tend to tell people, but when, when corporate America asks your opinion, they don't want to hear it. They're not interested in your opinion. It's lip service. So I got out and built a practice on my own. I've been doing that for the better part of the last 20 years. And <clears throat> that's superior toxicology and wellness. And superior toxicology and wellness, you know, the bread and butter is doing a lot of the consulting work in the pharmaceutical industry. And a lot of it's been occupational exposure limits. And what that is, is that's the level of drug product that employees can be exposed to before there's an increased risk of adverse effect in the factory setting. So the people that are making the tablets and capsules that people get from CVS or Walgreens, those folks are working with chemicals that are designed to have an effect on the human body. And if they provide a pathway of exposure, 100 times out of 100, those drugs are going to have that desired designed effect. And if the exposure is large enough, the dose makes the poison, then you're going to have the undesired effects or side effects. So in addition to the OELs, my other bread and butter for the last couple decades has been does, um, setting ADIs, acceptable daily intakes. And what that is, and most people don't realize this with the pharmaceutical industry in general, what that is, is the amount of drug A that can be found in drug B before it's an issue for the user. So the tablets and capsules that someone gets from Walgreens or CVS for one thing could have up to X amount of drug completely different from it. And this is completely okay, according to the pharmaceutical industry. And it's guys like me that set those levels that can be found in situations like that. And, you know, 99% of the time you can get away with that. 99% of the time there's no adverse reactions. But uh, what you got to think about is allergy because nobody knows what they're allergic to until they have a reaction. <laughs> and the first time that you have that reaction, <clears throat> you know, it might be a sensitization, but the second time it can be full-blown anaphylaxis. You know, that's a fancy scientific word for saying that uh, your, your breathing is going to shut down and you're going to have a massive histamine response that uh, you can't breathe, you get hives, you get uh, closed airways, and you're in a very serious dire situation that can potentially be fatal. And <clears throat> so over the years, 
I have really concentrated on doing those two functions. And then I also do, you know, other stuff like uh, this drug product is degrading into these different chemical entities. Is it okay to still use this active ingredient? So the toxicology of the pharmaceutical industry is actually quite involved. And the better way uh, for me actually comes in the wellness part. And for superior toxicology and wellness, I have made a good living on drug products, but I'm one of the first people that will say drugs are not the answer. And some of these drugs will absolutely positively ruin your life. And if there's a better way that people can get off of drugs, I want to help them do that. And I have a program for that. That's on my website, Superior Toxicology and Wellness, or it's superiortoxicology.com. And you look for the HOPE button. And HOPE stands for Health Optimization Prescription Evaluation. Because in today's society, physicians don't have time to go through a patient's drug products. And we can talk more about that in a while. But I do that for people. That's a better way for people that <clears throat> have realized all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, over 20 years, that they wake up and they're on 6, 8, 10, 12 drugs. And they don't know why. And it's a downward spiral for quality of life. And they don't know what the first step is to trying to regain control of their own wellness. Well, that first step is the HOPE program. And we can talk more about that. But the other thing as far as a better way, as far as my wellness practice, I mean, it's really designed for the person who wakes up, looks in the mirror and says, oh, my God, how did I get so fat? And then what do you do from there? What do you do from there? And I give a very practical approach for minimizing and eliminating toxins because we live in a toxic soup of exposure. There is stuff, there's chemical insults, there's physical insults, there's electromagnetic insults, there's pharmaceutical insults. We have them in our water, we have them in our air, we have them in our food, and we have them in our environment. And if we can eliminate one thing in the list of 10 things that can hurt us, are we going to be better off? The answer is yes. And the superior toxicology and wellness approach gives people that don't know where to turn, don't know what to do, don't like where they've woke up and actually seen where they're at, it gives them the first couple steps. And of course, you know, step one is, is the six inches between your ears. You have to be in the right mindset. Because if you're not thinking about stuff correctly, you're going to fail. And another step one, if you will, there's multiple step ones, is that you can't change too much. Because if you try to change lots of things at once, you're going to set yourself up to fail. You know, if you want to change your diet or you want to change how you drink or you want to change just your exercise pattern, what you're going to end up is you're going to end up starving, hungry, completely unsatisfied, and sore from going down in the basement and lifting weights that you haven't done in 20 years. And, you know, it happens every January on a small basis. But uh, if, if people think about this in a more rational approach, how long did it take you to get in the spot where you are? It wasn't overnight. didn't take a month. You're talking years. You're talking decades. What makes you think you're going to be able to turn that page in a month? It's just not going to happen. And you need to make yourself a plan, a journey, a map, whatever you want to call it, and take the few steps. You know, and, you know, it's, it's eliminating toxins from your daily life. It's eliminating bad choices. It's changing the way you eat. You know, and it, I mean, the, the easy one with the way you eat, really, humans, and you could probably back this up, it, it, humans eat about four times more than they really need to, to survive. So, you know, the superior toxin wellness mantra about food is eat half and mostly plants and you're probably going to be okay. Easier said than done. You know, and most people wake up and it's like, how did I get this fat? Well, I just read a great book and it's called The Obesity Code by Jason Fung. And basically the two things that stood out from that book is that extended, elevated insulin leads to obesity. And when you have extended, elevated insulin, your body develops insulin resistance. And it's the insulin resistance, which gets more insulin produced from your body, which leads to obesity. And if you live in a very stressful environment, you live in a, in a bath of cortisol, which is a hormone that your body produces in response to stress. 
doesn't matter what causes the stress. Could be job stress, could be financial stress, could be stress from kids, could be stress from dealing with the in-laws at Thanksgiving. You never know where that stress is coming from. But the end result is your body jacks up the cortisol levels. Well, the cortisol levels <laughs> leads to obesity. And the other fact of the matter is not getting enough sleep leads to obesity. And the, the other thing that this book really preaches to get away from the road that leads to obesity is intermittent fasting. And we can certainly talk about that some more too. But when you wake up and you look in the mirror and you see this huge person where you used to be, then you got to say, how, how, do, how do I get back? How do I regain control of my own wellness? And Superior Toxin Wellness tries to provide those answers, try to provide those paths, and tries, excuse me, and tries to provide the easy steps that you can use to establish your own program, which is individual as every person under the sun. And that program involves better water, better food, better activity, and trying to eliminate some of your drug products. And if you can build this over time in a stepwise manner, you know, it might be like turning the Titanic around, hopefully before you hit the iceberg, but you can do it. And Superior Toxin Wellness is, has helped a lot of people. Like one of the, one of the hope evaluations that, that I uh, recently did, the person was on 12 drugs and 17 supplements. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> and in those 12 drugs, there were five therapeutic areas that had redundant therapy. What does that mean? That's a fancy way of saying she was taking multiple drugs for the same thing and five separate things. We were able to help her a lot. So, you know, what the, the HOPE program does is it provides questions for you to bring back to your doctor or your healthcare provider and essentially say, prove to me that I need to be on this medication. And that gives you the power to say, I don't think I need to be on all these prescription drugs. And these are the questions I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to listen for your answers to see if you can still convince me that it's in my best interest to be on these drugs. Because Americans today are on way too many drugs. How many people do you know that have those little pill organizers? It's got their morning pills, it's got their night pills for every day of the week, every day of the week. You know, and it's, it's not just, it's just not just blood pressure pills or, uh, you know, I had a heart attack, so I got to be on blood thinner pills or, uh, you know, the, the old, the ones I love are the, the pre-diabetes, that whole drug regimen. You know, this is, you're, you're getting a little thick, you know, it's get fat season between Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day is get fat season because it's, you know, or, <laughs> or between Halloween, I guess, Halloween is the kickoff and it goes all the way to, to Valentine's Day that the, the marketing just kills humans in eating junk. You know, it's like dessert first, then you eat, and then you have dessert again. And it's just the way of the marketing. And anybody that has little to no willpower, it's you can ask them. They, they pack on the pounds between Halloween and, and, uh, and Valentine's Day. But, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that, that you're up against the marketing. You're up against society. And if you don't have the right infrastructure to make the right choices, it's tough. That's where it comes back into, you know, the practical food advice of eat half and mostly plants. And, you know, I'm a big guy and I woke up and I looked in the mirror and when, when my scale was, was over 300, I'm like, holy mackerel, that's ridiculous. That's enough. You know? And so I started taking my own advice. You got to eat half. You got to eat mostly plants. Portion control is part of it. The book, the obesity code tells you why every diet fails. You know, there's basically three food groups. You got protein, you got carbohydrate, and you got fat. And a lot of these different diets will limit one or two of these food groups. And they're very extreme. That's why none of them completely work. All of them set you up for initial success. And you see 10, 20, 30 pounds of weight loss in a lot of these. And if you have the willpower and drive to stick to it, you can make that work for a while and possibly change a few lives. But in most cases, as soon as you go off that diet and you revert back to uh, the three food groups all in, the, in your diet, that weight comes charging back because your body has a body weight set point that it likes. And if you do something to try to change that body weight set point, it fights like mad to maintain homeostasis. That's a fancy science word for keeping everything the way it is right now. And their body is designed to do that. 
and your body actually in it's really designed uh, overall to withstand periods of plentiful food and periods of famine the way the human was you know back way back to the cave days and the hunter gatherer days it was designed to graze not have three square meals a day like the modern industrial revolution started but it's designed to go periods of time with no food. And that's the whole idea behind the intermittent fasting. And intermittent fasting, the most important benefit of intermittent fasting is that you have a drop in insulin levels for a sustained amount of time. And when you have that drop in insulin levels in your blood, your body is able to battle the insulin resistance. So the insulin resistance decreases when you can get several hours, you know, like from dinner the night before until breakfast the next morning. You know, that's why they call it breakfast, break fast. But if you can put off breakfast, you know, everybody says in the food industry, mind you, so that's the marketing machine. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, that's, you know, that's, in my opinion, sometimes that's what comes out of us, the south end of a horse that's walking north. So if you can push off breakfast, you know, have your coffee or whatever caffeine that you choose, you know, mine is, is green tea have whatever you need in the morning liquid wise, but wait to eat a substantial meal until you're hungry. Listen to your body. And the longer interval you can get from dinner to breakfast, the better off you're going to be. And if you can get that to, you know, 12 hours or 16 hours or even longer, that is a great start on intermittent fasting to get after the insulin resistance and you know, those diets that say eat six meals a day, you know, just space them out. All that does is plateau your insulin for longer. So what does that do? <laughs> it drives you to the obesity spectrum. And it's just, it's crazy how all of these diets are essentially set up to fail. And then there's always the eat less, just, you know, eat less and move more. It's logical, right? Well, what would you, I mean, there's 70 years of evidence that suggests that that ultimately doesn't work either. And it's in that book. They take, they take you right through everything. And so yeah, it's just when you really realize what drives obesity, and unfortunately, it's stacked against you. The people that are fat get fatter. And there's just nothing. I mean, you, gotta, you really have to understand what it is that makes that happen. And it's all coming back to the spiked insulin levels. So then you look at what spikes insulin levels. Well. You've heard of the glycemic index of different foods. You know, that's the, how much the blood sugar rises when you eat certain foods. And then when that blood sugar rises, the insulin's coming right after it. So you have to be mindful of your food choices. And the food choices that you really need are whole foods, raw foods. You've heard shop the perimeter of the supermarket. Well, yeah, of course, it's the most expensive way to do things, but still it's the more healthy way to do things. Because if you're eating more plants and you're eating more whole foods, <clears throat> they're going to be around the perimeter of the supermarket. It's just that way, you know? And then the other enemy to spiked insulin levels is the processed foods. And the more processed foods, the, the worse the choice. And more of those processed foods are laid, are loaded with extra sugar. So, you know, and, and it's not just sugar. There's about 12 different names for sugar and you got to learn those and you got to read labels because that helps your food choices and then that helps to keep your insulin levels down and that gives your body a chance to battle that insulin resistance and that sets you up for success in the why am I so fat battle. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> with all of that, it's just the better way. It's a practical approach. you know. And you can do it with the fancy diets. You can do it with single foods. You can do it with the grapefruit diet, the South Beach diet, whatever, but you can't do that very long. You can't do that very long. And the more you try to change, the less you're going to succeed, unless you're one of those super people with all kinds of willpower. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Wow. That is, that is amazing. That just kind of having that balance. Now, now turning to toxins for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what kind of toxins are prevalent in the home? What, what are we generally exposed to? Well, it's, uh, you got your cleaning products. You know, so that's going to be your ammonia. That's going to be your bleach. That's, you know, some of the, some of the worst things you can have around the house are quaternary ammoniums. And what is that? That's a fancy chemistry word for a very specific nitrogen group with uh, side chains. 
with four side chains, quat, that comes off of that ammonium. And they're very good at killing stuff. So good disinfectant, kills bacteria, kills viruses, kills fungus, kills mold, but it's also a very hazardous chemical. It can be an irritant. It can cause rash. If you're using too much of it, like it's, the dilution is wrong, which is easy to do, even on a household basis, um, you can get airway irritation and you can get immune response. So immune response, uh, the immune system is, is one of those systems that doesn't get any credit until it gets out of balance. And then the immune system can absolutely wreck a human being. Everyone's heard of autoimmune diseases like lupus and those sorts of things. Well, the onslaught of quaternary ammoniums and bleaches and stuff that are in the house on a regular basis uh, will poke that immune system until it gets out of balance. You know, so that's the cleaning products. And, you know, there are, there are some very, the good alternatives. There's natural alternatives and there's other different options you know, and Mm. you just got to do your research on that and you got to be comfortable in the decisions you make there. Uh, Other toxins that we, we can find in the, in the house. Let's, let's talk about water for a little bit. You know, um, the, you know, the cities, most cities, towns, municipalities have a water treatment plant that they usually use chlorine in the water treatment plant. And then they send the water out to all the houses and what comes out of the tap, which I wouldn't drink nine times out of 10 is um, chlorinated water. That's quote pure. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means that it probably won't make you sick most times. But the way these models work is they overchlorinate because they have to have a residual of chlorine in the water. Chlorine is a halogen. And you can look up on the periodic table of elements. There's that one column of halogens. And all of these halogens, they have a propensity to exchange with very important physiologic elements in your body. You know, one of the most prevalent is calcium, you know. So, you know, your, your fluoride, your bromine, your, your chlorine, and all of these different halogens like to kick out these other elements. So if there's chlorine in your water, and there always is, unless you take care of it here, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute, um, you can have these different substitution reactions going on in your body. It's organic chemistry. It's what the chemistry is designed to do. And you're swallowing this stuff in your tap water. So how can you prevent that? Well, there's easy and there's expensive. The expensive obviously is a reverse osmosis system for your house. You know, you can go drop a few grand and you can do that. If you got the resources, great. Most people I know don't have the resources. So what can you do as an every average, average everyday Joe? Well, you get online, Amazon, or go to Walmart or Target or wherever it is, and you buy yourself a zero water filter. They cost about 35, 40 bucks, maybe a little bit more if you want a bigger reservoir. You know, the carbon filter that comes with most refrigerators nowadays is good, but all that does is take out flavors. The zero water filter has a seven stage filter in it, and they sell that product with a total dissolved solids meter. So what they say is that run some tap water, put that meter in your glass of tap water and see what the number says. And then run some tap water through this, the, the zero water filter and read it again. And you will see hundreds of units difference. And what most people will realize after you go out and you buy the zero water filter and you filter some of your tap water and then you taste what water is supposed to be, you'll realize how good water actually is. And your amount of hydration will go up. You'll drink a lot more water. You'll decrease all of the sugar, you know, no more Cokes, no more Diet Cokes, no more Mountain Dews, no more anything. You're going to want water because hydration is key to maintaining cellular health. And we can go back to that in a minute. But the zero water filter takes out the chlorine and it takes out fluoride and it takes out all trace heavy metals. You know, the, 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 the water plant is good for taking out your sticks and twigs and crickets and all that kind of stuff. And then it's the it chlorinates it to kill, you know, your E. coli and your salmonella and all of those other common bacteria. And, um, then it goes out through the pipes and the pipes have biofilm. If you've ever cut into your plumbing to do any kind of repairs around the house and you run your finger around the inside of that pipe and you feel the sliminess, you know, most people have done that. That's biofilm. And in that biofilm is where all of those bacteria live because the bacteria are secreting that slimy stuff to create 
a, ho a home for all of that bacteria that the chlorine can't get to. The chlorine cannot penetrate the biofilm and the chlorine does not kill that bacteria. So your best case scenario is they kill a lot of the bacteria at the water plant, but then send it through contaminated pipes. And what comes out of your tap water is re-inoculated with this bacteria. And the best that we are hoping for is that there's enough residual chlorine, and that's why they need the residual chlorine, to kill enough of that bacteria to keep people well. Does that make sense? It, it does. So Isn't that you, kind of a weird water purification model? Yes, because they, they're, you know, helping you at the, at the water plant, but then the, the transport method is what seems to be a little problematic. It, it re-inoculates the water. So, you know, everybody's their own little Petri dish and you got microbiology experiments, experiments walking around everywhere. And then just the use of chlorine, free chlorine will combine with organics in the water supply and form trihalomethanes. That's disinfection byproducts, which over time has been shown to be carcinogenic to human beings. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there's got to be a better way. The better way is actually called a chemical called twin oxide, and that's chlorine dioxide. It's ClO2. Chemically, you can't get free chlorine from that molecule. And so you get zero disinfection byproducts. So when a municipality switches from disinfection with chlorine to disinfection with chlorine dioxide or twin oxide is the one I like plenty of chlorine dioxide products, but twin oxide, I think is the best. Then you remove carcinogens from your drinking water. And that's just one thing you can do, you know, so you can work at the city level, which is a hard sell because the engineers and bean counters at the city level think the general population is okay with having a few carcinogens in their drinking water. I find that absolutely ridiculous. When you take the story to the people, the people are always saying, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll pay a couple dollars more a month for water. If I can get carcinogen free water, who wouldn't, it's a better way to do that. So that's the water part. And individually, you can do that with a zero water filter. So you can do that with a zero water filter in your own fridge and clean up the water that you drink. And that eliminates all of the toxic exposure from the water supply. And you can do that very cheaply in your own home. It's a step in the right direction. So let's talk about uh, things in your house that could result in toxins, you know, anything that's got adhesives or, um, you know, the compressed furniture stuff, you know, the particle board furniture or, uh, paints, they've gotten a lot better in the last 10 years. You know, the low VOC volatile organic carbon paints, you know, you're, you're, there's less off gassing from paints, but you still have adhesives and adhesives go into, you know, all of the tile work in a house, all of the, the, um, like the, the carpeting, all of the carpet padding, all of the compressed board furniture. And over time, these construction products off gas, these volatile organic carbons. And it just it brings it up in the air. And what happens in a house that doesn't have an air purifier, the air purifier is your lungs. And your lungs do a great job at pulling all of the organics out of the air and sequestering those things and getting rid of them. But it's your lungs. So, you know, there's, there's air purifiers on the market. You know, the ones I like are from Valera, you know, it's a, uh, it's a dual, it's a, uh, ion generator and it's an ozone generator. So the ions, the negative ions, uh, combine with the particles in the air and it drops everything out of the air and the ozone gets after your, um, airborne contaminants. So, you know, you can clean up your water, you can clean up your air. What you notice when you have an air purifier is that uh, your horizontal surfaces are dustier. And that's just because you're weighing down those airborne particles and it's fallen down as dust, but then you're not breathing it. So yeah. when you're not breathing it, it keeps the insult, the attack on your lungs less. So your body has more capacity to fight off other stuff like allergens like pollen like if you have to go to the city for work all of the stuff that's associated with air quality in a city and it's all about keeping your cells healthy so if you think about it the human body is really made up of uh of cells billions and billions and billions of cells and the cells they take ingredients from the body and oxygen and make energy the little part of the cell called the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the body. And it takes the oxygen and it takes the cofactors and stuff. And it turns out ATP, which is the science fancy word for energy that runs everything. You know, 
If you really want to know what it is, it's adenosine triphosphate. Okay, I'm a nerd. <laughs> but <laughs> what you got there is your energy center for the cell, which makes everything the human body needs to be the human body, is flawed. <laughs> because everybody that breathes kicks out oxygen radicals. And an oxygen radical is like a little dagger, a spear, a knife that goes sending out from the cell and poking holes in everything that it runs into. That could be cell membranes, that could be organelles, that could be enzymes, that could be proteins, cellular macromolecules. And if the body or if the cell doesn't have enough defense mechanisms, and usually they do, then these little spears hit important parts. You know, they start hitting things like DNA. And then if one of these oxygen radicals hits DNA, changes the DNA structure, and the cell doesn't go back and clip that off and turn it back into what it's supposed to be, and the cell divides, that's when you have a mutation. And a mutation can lead to such bad things as cancer. And there's lots of that. You know, that could be a whole other show. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is that bucket of cellular protective mechanisms, you know, the most famous of which is called glutathione. Most people have heard of glutathione. There's lots of different mechanisms, but glutathione goes in that bucket. Everything we're exposed to at the cellular level draws its defenses from that one reservoir of defenses. So if there's something in the air, something in the water, something in the food, uh, like you, you live right next to a 5G post that's microwaving you or, you know, whatever you believe from the science, because they're on both sides, it hits those cellular defenses. And as long as there's some there, you're good to go. Your body is going to protect itself. So, um, but the side effect of breathing is those oxygen radicals, which is why everybody preaches antioxidants, antioxidants, antioxidants. Take your vitamin C, take this, take that. You know, everybody has their favorite supplement, which is the best antioxidant on the market. And I'm going to tell you which one is here in a second. And uh, that will help you because your body is firefighting every single day. And it doesn't matter where the chemical insults come from. It comes from cleaning products. It comes from bad water. It comes from bad indoor air quality. It comes from the fact that uh, you bought an old house and behind the walls, there's stachybotrys black mold growing uncontrollably all over creation. And your mycotoxin count, which is the toxin that comes out of the black mold, is through the roof. And that will kill you. <laughs> I mean, it's just that simple. You know, there's lots of things on this rock that'll knock a human out completely game over. Sorry, you're, you're done. But there's also little simple things that you can do to keep that uh, at bay. You know, your air purifier, your water purifier, and, and making sure that your antioxidants are up to snuff. Because the human body has a tremendous capacity to heal if it has the resources to do it. And the way you provide the resources for your body is that you keep your antioxidant level to such a point that it helps fight that daily antioxidant battle against the oxygen radicals that are there all the time. And one specific molecule that does that better than everything else on the earth is carbon-60. And carbon-60, you can Google that. You'll find hundreds of products that have carbon-60 in it. The one I like is from LiveLongerLabs.com, and it's called C60 Complete. It has carbon-60, and it combines it with black seed oil and curcumin. The two natural products are tremendous at organ protective, and it's, it's antibiotic, it's antiviral, it's anti-cancer. You can type in carbon-60, black seed oil, and curcumin on the NIH database, and you'll get 25,000 hits immediately of all of the good benefits of those three particular products. So the, the, what I really like is the C60 Complete, by LiveLongerLabs.com, the guy that invented this product actually made it for his mother who was beginning to suffer early stage Alzheimer's and dementia. And it cleaned up her mental capacities, gave her seven more years of completely mental clarity life. And Max, the inventor of the product, actually told me one day the product worked so good that his mother got back to the point of irritating him. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. what yeah. that does is it keeps that bucket of cellular defenses full. Because the carbon-60 takes care of the daily firefighting, and then your body has resources that it can allocate where it needs to heal. If someone has liver problems, they're going to get the resources. If someone has kidney issues, they're going to get the resources. If somebody has cardiac issues, the body is going to heal those areas. I know a lady, she's a retired uh, OBGYN physician, and she was suffering from macular degeneration. You ever heard of that one? Yes. It's, it's one of those irreversible diseases which causes a blind spot in your field of vision that gets bigger. It is completely based in oxidative stress. 
So she found out about the C60 product and she started taking C60 in olive oil and the bottle of C60 that's designed to last a normal person a month, she took in a week. Mm-hmm. And her eye doctor had already told her, you're going to be blind, get used to it, start getting, start preparing yourself mentally for, for going blind. And then she started taking this C60 and uh, not only did it halt the macular degeneration in its tracks, it reversed it. Wow. And they have the before and the after pictures of her eye to prove that. And that eye doctor, which told her, there's nothing we can do. You're going to go blind, broke his arm, patting himself on the back was such a great job that he did treating her macular degeneration. You know, and of course the physician, she didn't tell him what she was doing. She's like, she just let him believe that it was all him. And the fact of the matter is the body has incredible healing potential when it has the, the, the tools to do that. And it's, it's those types. It's like my mom, you know, my mom is 80 years old and a year ago, or maybe a year and a half ago now, she had her first knee replaced. And then about half a year ago, she had her second knee replaced. The first knee, she was not on C60 complete. The second knee, she was on C60 complete. And the second time around, she saw less pain, less swelling, less inflammation. And her progression through physical therapy went way faster, ahead of schedule. And um, she completely credits the C60 complete antioxidant uh, capacities for her very successful recovery from her second knee replacement. And it's just, she asks the question now, why did I wait so long? I could have done this 20 years ago. So, <laughs> sure. and it's, yeah. it's just the, it's just knowing the right things to use and how to use them and, and where they're available. And, you know, so that's, that's uh, the antioxidants also help against those airborne toxins. Mm-hmm. You know, the stuff you find in poor air quality, whether it's from mold or adhesives or construction materials, or even cleaning products. You know, the, the laundry detergent that you dump in the, in the bath or, or in the dishwasher or, you know, the stuff that you're scrubbing a sink with or your carpet cleaner, they all come into play. They're all toxins. It all comes down to the toxicological principle of the dose makes the poison. What that means is things that are exquisitely toxic, think cyanide, that uh, if you're exposed in a low enough amount are going to be fairly innocuous. In the gold industry, cyanide is used in the purification of the gold. It doesn't kill anybody. And then the other side of that is think something that's not toxic at all. Let's say water. If you're exposed in high enough concentrations, it can be very toxic. The drug of abuse, ecstasy, popular with the young crowd these days and their raves. The the toxic reaction to somebody who is high on ecstasy is extreme thirst. What that means is it drives these kids to drink water, trying to quench their thirst, and it just doesn't happen. And they drink water you know, so much water that it dilutes their cellular electrolytes and it fouls the cell to cell communication and it kills them. So it messes up the biochemistry of the body just from too much water. So the dose makes the poison. It's one of the pillars of toxicology and it applies to everything. Think about it. What happens when you have a beer or a glass of wine or, you know, shot of whiskey? One cool things, you know, Hey, your inhibitions start to go and, and, and it's okay. But what happens when you have two, three, five, 10, 12, 24, it's a dose response curve. Dose makes the poison. So, you know, alcohol is another one. You got rubbing alcohol and it's just, just the uh, alcohol is in a different spot on that little, uh, on that little three carbon molecule backbone or two carbon for ethanol, you know, and Different things can happen. You know, obviously too much ethanol is going to make you sick. You're going to throw up. You're going to have a hangover. We can talk about that, but it's all toxicity. Rubbing alcohol or methanol, you know, it forms a very specific metabolite that's exquisitely toxic to the optic nerve. That's why it causes blindness. They call it wood alcohol. If somebody's making moonshine and they don't get the distillation right, it contaminates it with methanol and that that can cause a lot of blindness. But the fact of the matter is it's all basic chemistry. It's all explainable, but it doesn't eliminate the results if somebody has too much of it. And it all goes back to the dose makes the poison. It doesn't matter where the toxins come from. If your cells are healthy, that means having enough of those defensive elements in that bucket of defenses. If your cells are healthy, healthy cells make healthy tissues. Healthy tissues make healthy organs. Healthy organs make healthy systems. And healthy systems make happy humans. So it's all about cellular health. You know, in, the, in decades past, 
it was infectious disease, which really took out a lot of human beings, you know, cholera in the water, you know, it's a typhoid or flu or any number of different things. But as medicine advances and we have antibiotics and antivirals and pharmaceutical therapies for a lot of these old time infectious diseases, the new threat is toxicity. And the, the catchphrase for that is, if you're sick without fever, suspect toxicity. Because you will have the symptoms and you will have the signs, but it doesn't elicit a classic immune response, which is, oh, hey, I got a bacteria on board. I'm going to jack up my temperature because just small elevations in temperature kill those bacteria. You know, everybody's real quick to fight that fever. Well, let the fever run its course because your body is killing what it doesn't want there using that fever. Mm -hmm. It's a very important part of the immune response. But so if you're sick without fever, suspect toxicity. And then you got stuff like in the garage, you know, your, your ethylene glycol, antifreeze, the green stuff that you pour in your radiator. You know, that's another common solvent that, that you know, pets, kids, and humans can get into. And it, it has a very sweet taste. So if your dog gets into that, they're going to drink a lot of it. And then they're going to die of kidney failure. Mm -hmm. And that's a painful death. You know, all of those forensic files, the, those shows that of all the different ways people kill each other, you know, the, I love the toxicology ones because it's, it's always either antifreeze or some heavy metal that they found and they're, they're trying to kill people with low doses of cyanide. What they don't know is that, you know, the, the roadmap for small dose, long-term poisoning is your hair. Because all of these heavy metals or drug products or toxins of any sort deposit in hair. And, you, you know, I could take a strand of your hair and analyze it and tell you what you were exposed to, you know, from the top of your head all the way out to the end. And it, and it gives a very good forensic picture of, of what you were exposed to. You know, even the indoor air pollutants can be found in hair. Yeah. And it's, just, it's, it's the roadmap to what we're exposed to. But the thing about it is the human body is designed to fight all that. There is defense mechanism upon defense mechanism upon defense mechanism. If that wasn't the case, we'd all be dead a long time ago. You know, if it wasn't the bacteria, it would be the viruses. If it wasn't the viruses, it would be the, the, the poisonous animals that we run into. You know, if it wasn't that, it would be uh, hanging out around, you know, like Yellowstone Park and getting a big dose of what comes out of those uh, the, the seismic activities and stuff. And it's just, it's, it's all about toxicology. Everything in moderation and you're going to be okay. And that goes back to what you eat, what you drink, the choices you make, and then it also goes back to your toxins around the house. You know, do a little research, figure out what the harshest ones are, figure out what the, the calmer ones are, figure out what your goals are and use the best product, you know? And then it's also based on individual reaction because, you know, some people are very resistant to chemicals and some people are extremely sensitive to chemicals. What's the best way to figure out where you lie on that spectrum? Well, when you have a headache, do you take one ibuprofen tablet or do you take Four, to get rid of that headache on a general everyday basis. If you're taking one, you are a sensitive chemical person, which probably means, you know, the drug that the doctor prescribes from you is loading you up and you can probably take half that dose. If you take four, that means that you got a lot of reservoirs in your body that have to be saturated before that drug is doing what it's supposed to do. And, you know, it's funny that uh, anesthesia, you know, that's the stuff that numbs people for surgeries. I know uh, somebody that they, they give a dose and they end up puking for three hours in the recovery room because they got too much. And I know another person that had enough anesthesia for three people and they could still feel the pain. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is in the world of medicine, they design drug therapy for the middle of the normal curve. You know, the normal distribution curve, that's your statistics reference for the rest of you statistics nerds out there. But, uh, you know, you have your standard deviation and you have your standard deviations away from the mean. Most people are within one or two standard deviations away from the mean. And those two particular people I just talked about were in the tails. But you have to worry about those people because it's those extreme reactors, both good and bad, which are the exceptions to the rule. And in the drug world, the physicians have to be very well aware of it. And I was talking to an anesthesiologist yesterday, and the big joke in the world of anesthesiologists is they get paid 10% of their money to put you to sleep <laughs> and 90% of the money to wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's just, it's, it's all relative. And, and really the other thing it comes down to is, is risk management. 
Mm-hmm. And it, it's all comes down to voluntary risk versus um, involuntary risk. You know, voluntary risk is I choose to smoke cigarettes. One of the worst things in the world you could possibly do. Talking about importing toxins into your world. Or, you know, I live in Colorado, the premier flagship first state to legalize marijuana. Oh, yeah, it's healthy. Right. Uh Uh-huh. You're still putting foreign substances into your lungs. Doesn't matter what it is. Are your lungs designed to do that? No. Will it keep up for a while? Yeah. But there are going to be adverse effects over time. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. In every case. But the fact of the matter is, that's a voluntary risk. So is having a a beer or six beers. So is eating grilled foods off the, with the char boil marks from the grill. It's all voluntary risk. The involuntary risk is, well, at my job, they tell me to go into this room and work with these hazardous chemicals. That's not my choice. They're telling me to do that. So that's involuntary risk. And the difference is um, you're willing to deal with the, with the consequences of those voluntary risks. Whereas in the involuntary risk, it's somebody else's fault. Somebody else told me to do that. You know, you got to compensate me for these things. Mm. And it's that spectrum when it all blends into the same picture. doesn't matter where the risk came from. You're the one that's dealing with it. You're the mm. one that has to deal with the consequences and the choices and, and everything else. Luckily, we're suited for that. The human mm. body is, is very well adept at living in the toxic soup of exposure that we do live in. Sure. But the good news is that we ha- can make choices. Like Absolutely. they're addressing those uh, toxins in the home, addressing you know the food we eat or the water we drink, or you know to the extent that we can. It's probably exactly. never going to be a hundred percent, but right. There's simple things you can do, and the whole idea is decreasing your exposures, decreasing mm-hmm. your exposures, and you're going to be better off because when you decrease your exposures, you increase your capacity to deal with unexpected exposure. Mm-hmm. Interesting. The good point. Now, how can people get in contact with you? This has been amazing, Joe. It's really a real eye opener as to easy, well, it easy, is easy, I guess, easy in quotes, <laughs> easy things that we can do around the home or at sure. least doing your research. To see Absolutely. People can get a hold of me via my website, superiortoxicology.com. Okay. And if they can't remember that, if you Google Dr. Joe for hope, you're going to find me. <laughs> and that's the that's the uh, the program to look at your pharmaceutical products. And I'm developing a new section on my web page that gives all these practical tips and pointers and the first steps for the wellness program. It's not there yet, but it will be there in time. Okay. SuperiorToxicology.com. Excellent. We will include all of those things in the show notes. And Joe, it's been amazing. It's been a pleasure having you on. You are the one of the premier toxicologists probably in, in a good part of the world. So we appreciate all that you're doing, all your research, your own research, the science behind it, really getting that information out to the people is super important. I appreciate, appreciate the invite. It. And if, you're, if your listeners come up with specific questions and we need a follow-up show, I'm happy to do that too. Absolutely. Well, we will, uh, we'll put that on the burner for a while too. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. Thank you much for having me. 